Malt heads up the Organ Studies Department. As well as teaching, he gives acclaimed recitals all over the world and regularly plays for songs of praise. This studio seems fantastic. This is a, a, a room which tries to replicate the acoustics of a large building. So if I clap my hand, you'll hear the sound rolling round for a few seconds. So our organists get training here in a room where they get something of the feedback they would in a major concert space or cathedral. What is it about the sound that the organ can make that makes it so synonymous with sacred music? It's because, firstly, it's so powerful that it can accompany you know, hundreds, if not thousands, of voices uh, in some contexts. Also, the nature of the sound, it's very, very solid, and it can play very smooth or legato. In fact, it's the instrument, really, for congregational singing because of its properties. A lot of our organ students, they're organ scholars at the cathedrals and some at smaller churches in the region, so in our own way we're doing our part to <laughs> provide services for the church. The students' enthusiasm for the organ is infectious. I think one of the wonderful things about this particular instrument is the wide variety of colours that it can get. For example, I mean, in this wonderful acoustic, the eight-foot flute is just to die for. It's just so exquisite. exquisite. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas there is much more of a power that you can get. Um, so that you can be transported to Versailles. Wow, <laughs> so majestic. And these are the stops, aren't they? Yes. So, uh, do you ever literally pull out all the stops? You don't, do you? Sometimes it depends <laughs> on the occasion. <laughs> what are your hopes for the future as an organist? I'd certainly like to continue working in cathedral music for the uh, foreseeable future, but I'd also like to see the organ made available to a wider public, especially kids and getting schools coming around and things like that, which is something which is starting to happen more. I think out of this department, actually, I'm the only Catholic organist, okay. and I take the Catholic liturgy very, very seriously, and there are multiple ways that we, we bring that out in a service. Well, you've played so many hymns and songs over mm -hmm. the years. Is there one that stands out for you? It's got to be a tune written by an organist, <laughs> Sir George Alvey, uh, to the words crown him with many crowns, uh, which is one of my personal favourites. Uh, and I recorded this for Songs of Praise not very long ago in a broadcast from the Royal Albert Hall in London, which is one of the UK's very finest instruments.
Birmingham Conservatoire has produced great professional musicians. Our next hymn is performed by one of the Conservatoire's former students, Birmingham-born, award-winning singer-songwriter Laura Mvula. Here she is with a beautiful rendition of It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrow like sea billows roll Whatever my Lord Thou hast taught me to say It is well October is Black History Month, an opportunity to celebrate the contribution the generations of African and Caribbean people have made to British society. Here in Birmingham, the Caribbean community has made a huge difference to the city since their arrival in the 1950s. They came full of faith and in hope of a new life. Historian Kahindi Andrews's father came from Jamaica. You can't understand Britain and certainly can't understand someone like Birmingham without understanding the black history. So many people came to Birmingham basically because there were lots of jobs, right? So Birmingham is growing as a city at the same time as you have uh, migration from the Caribbean. There was a Dunlop factory, a HP Source factory. Peter Knight, please. And really importantly as well, the NHS. Hospitals being built, uh, nurses being employed. And it's no coincidence that we had the celebration of Windrush this year and we also had the celebration of the NHS this year. I think for people in our generation it's difficult to really understand just how over and how obvious the racism that people faced. Before 1965 it was perfectly legal to discriminate on the grounds of race. So you had signs like no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. You couldn't live in particular areas, you couldn't have particular jobs and you couldn't join particular church communities. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem. Just and so what happened was that people had to start their own churches, and that's why there's so many different denominations uh, of churches in African Caribbean communities. Uh, but also it's partly about culture and how do you praise the Lord. And that kind of clap hand tradition, that spiritual tradition, just doesn't really exist in the Church of England and in Catholic churches. So people wanted to it, praise the Lord in a different way. As well as the churches, another big difference for those arriving from the Caribbean was the food. Are we almost finished now? Yeah, About half of it that's left, yeah? The Sunrise Bakery in Smethwick began in 1966 to provide a taste of home. We make a range of bread and buns for the Caribbean market. Um, the bread is called a hard dough bread. It is slightly firmer due to the process by which it is made. And of course, when the early settlers came from the Caribbean, they had a lot of difficulty sourcing food that they liked. You know, we've often heard about the accommodation issues 
or we've heard about the acceptance issues, but one of the most basic issues that you had to tackle was finding food. You know, it's okay fighting other issues, but you cannot fight in a hungry stomach. And bread was one of the easiest things to make because the ingredients are all here. It's basically flour, water, yeast, sugar. Yeah. Okay, that's good, all right. Good. Errol Drummond took over the bakery from his father and now finds there's a growing appetite for artisan bread. Today we have more bakeries making this kind of product than we had 20 years ago. The bakery now makes over a million loaves a year and sells all over the UK. We have moved our products from supplying just the, the corner shops, if you like, into the supermarkets and appealing to a wider audience, which is something that I'm quite proud of. One of my favourite hymn is How Great Thou Art. What that shows me is the humility of the writer and the writer accepting that the creator is much greater than we are.